Hey everyone, day 10 of the Gospel of Mark reading challenge, and today I want to bring up the word ransom. This word comes out of the most famous verse in Mark, Mark 10, 45. Jesus said, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, Jesus was speaking to his disciples who had a long understanding of the word ransom. Ransom goes all the way back to Exodus chapter 30 in the law of Moses. Exodus 30, verses 11 through 12, and then 15 and 16, and I'll read that right now. The Lord said to Moses, when you take the census of the people of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord when you number them, that there may be no plague among them when you number them. And then in 15 and 16, the rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less than half the shekel when you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives. You shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord so as to make atonement for your lives. So two things happen in the ransom payment in Exodus 30. One is that the one who pays the ransom gets to be numbered among the people of God. Two, they are counted as atoned for. They rest under the favor of the Lord. Their guilt, their sin is covered, and now they rest under the favor of the Lord. Well, Jesus is also talking to James and John and the disciples, and he says that if anyone, if anyone wants to be great among you, he must become a servant, and if anyone must be first, he must become a slave. Now, Mark's audience was Roman. This took place in first century Ro in the first century Roman Empire. And there were Roman slaves. There were slaves everywhere. Slaves were noticeable. They were in households. Slaves were made available to, available to Rome through either not being able to pay off debt or military conquest. And slaves had no rights. They weren't citizens. They were at the mercy of their masters. And one uh, ancient writer, a first century writer and philosopher named Dio Chrysostom said that slaves could be bound or whipped or even killed depending on the wishes and desires of their master. And we know that, a, that in order for a slave to go free, an equivalent had to be paid. That either came in monetary form, so for example, if I'm a slave, then my master could declare what I'm worth and accept a payment based on what I'm worth so that I may go free, or, or an equivalent, another slave must stand in my place. Well, what does Jesus mean when he says that he is the ransom or his life will be the ransom? How about all of the above? Think about your testimony and think about what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is teaching that you were once a slave. You were once a slave. You were not counted among the family or the fold of God and you weren't resting under the grace and the glorious favor of the Lord. And you had no rights you were a slave to fear, a slave to sin, a slave to the flesh, a slave to unrighteousness, a slave to Satan's power. But thanks be to God, Jesus, the Son of Man, stood in your place. He laid down willingly his rights, even his own life, and became the equivalent and, and stood in your place as a slave so that you could go free. So now you are counted among a, as a son or a daughter, one whom Jesus has brought to glory, counted among the family and the fold of God, resting under the grace and sovereign care and mercy of the living God, and you can go free. And you are free to choose a life of service and sacrifice because Jesus teaches that is what is truly life, that you gain life by laying it down for the sake of Christ because that is to be like Jesus. So praise God, praise Jesus, the one who has paid our ransom.
Amen and peace.